If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video before moving on. After reading the description, let's go ahead and draw a picture of this poster. Notice that the top and the bottom margins are both labeled with three centimeters. The left and the right margins are both labeled with two centimeters. The printed area of the poster would be this middle rectangle. We are told that the area of the printed material is 96 centimeters squared. If we label the width of the printed material as X and the length of the printed material as Y, and we remember that the area of a rectangle is the width times the length, we could say that x times y is equal to 96. And that will be the first of two equations that we're going to need for this problem. Given the fact that we had labeled this dimension x, hopefully it's pretty clear that the actual width of the entire poster is going to be that x plus the two inches on the left margin plus the two inches on the right margin, or a total of x plus four. So let's label the width of the whole poster x plus four. Similarly, the length of the entire poster is going to be what we labeled as y plus the three inch top margin plus the three inch bottom margin for a total length of y plus six. So let's label the entire length of the poster y plus six. Now the question asks us to find the dimensions of the poster with the smallest area. So we need a formula for the area of the entire poster, which again is just the width times the length. So let's write that out. The difficulty with this formula is that it is defined in terms of two variables, x and y. We turn to the other equation and solve it for y. So for example, if we divide both sides of this by x, we see that y is equal to 96 divided by x. And what we can do is take the 96 divided by x and plug it in to the y of the equation that we're trying to optimize. Now the equation is defined in terms of just a single variable, x. Why don't we go ahead and foil out this equation? We can actually go ahead and combine the like terms as well. And finally, I recommend that we move the x to the numerator. Remember, when doing that, the x to the positive one will become x to the negative one. We are now set to optimize this equation by taking the derivative of this equation. The constant term has a derivative of 0, 6x becomes 6, and then we use the power rule for the derivative of this term. So we have minus 384x to the minus 2. The next step is to set this derivative equal to zero and to solve for x. We can add this negative 384x to the negative two term over to the other side. That way these will cancel. We could multiply both sides of this equation by x to the positive two. And what that does is it's going to cancel out these terms. Remember x to the negative two times x to the positive two would be x to the zero because you just add the exponents together. x to the zero is just a one, so it basically cancels out. So that'll go away. At this point, it should be relatively easy to solve for x. You can divide both sides by six. And then if you square root both sides, we have x equals eight. Now, technically we have to show that this value of x produces the smallest area. In other words, this value of x will minimize the area. And to do that, we can use the second derivative test. The second derivative test tells us that if the second derivative is positive or greater than zero at our particular x value, then the area will be a minimum. So why don't we remind ourselves what the second derivative was? To calculate the second derivative, we recall the derivative of the constant will be zero. And we use the power rule by pulling down that exponent. A negative times negative two will become a positive two times 384x and then subtract one to make x to the negative three. This simplifies to 768 over x to the positive three. And certainly when we plug eight into this second derivative, we're going to get a positive result, a greater than zero result. So this test tells us that indeed at x equals eight, we have the minimum area. Since x equals eight, we can plug it in over here. So we would have eight plus four, that's going to equal 12. So that would be the final width of the poster. The y value needs to be determined in order to find the length of the poster. But we recall that y is equal to 96 divided by x. So we can write y is equal to 96 divided by our x, which was eight, and that gives us 12. And since y is 12, we would have 12 plus six, which is of course equal to 18. So the final answer, the final dimensions of this poster would be 12 centimeters for the width and 18 centimeters for the length.